right? So putting those together, price definitely comes down, but the effect on real GDP is ambiguous since in this case, the effect on real GDP is for it to go up, but in this case, the effect is for real GDP to go down. So they kind of offset one another. And uh, depending on which one shifts more, uh, will tell us whether GDP goes up or down. But without more information, we can't tell. All right, so to begin to wrap up this chapter, um, let's return to, uh, let's think about this, this Japanese economist telling his government, I told you so. Uh, so recently, Japan raised its national consumption tax rate from 5% to 8%. Now, there were two Japanese economists that predicted that the increase in the consumption tax would shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, decreasing aggregate demand uh, along their short-run aggregate supply curve, and that the equilibrium real GDP would drop by nearly 2%. Um, now, those effects led the Japanese government to postpone a planned additional increase in the consumption tax rate until at least 2017. So this is this is a bit old, but um, these economists were right. There was the increase in the tax led to a decrease in GDP, which led the Japanese government to to put further increases in the tax on hold because they didn't want to further reduce GDP. All right. Now let's return to um, the issue of minimum wage in Puerto Rico that we looked at the, at the beginning of the chapter. So as we saw, the increase in the federal minimum wage for the U.S. Uh, generated a negative aggregate supply shock in Puerto Rico, decreasing aggregate supply in Puerto Rico. Um, as about one-third of Puerto Rican workers uh, earned the minimum wage, and the increase in the minimum wage increased unemployment. Now, some firms responded to this increase in a minimum wage by halting operations entirely uh, or by laying off workers. So it led to an increase in unemployment. And this is what caused the, sh the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, decreasing aggregate supply, uh, resulting in a recessionary gap along with high unemployment uh, up above 12%. All right, so that was chapter 11. Just to recap real quick what we covered, uh, we talked about the, uh, the short-run determination of real GDP and price level in the classical model, uh, which to some degree was um, a review. Uh, we learned some more details there, uh, but we had looked at it in a previous chapter. Um, we saw that short-run aggregate supply uh, was vertical at full employment real GDP, uh, and that even in the short run, real GDP cannot increase in the absence of changes in factors of production that cause longer term economic growth. The only thing that changes is the price level, um, and movements in equilibrium price level are entirely generated by uh, changes in aggregate demand. Then in uh, section two, we learned about the Keynesian model. We learned about um, prices and wages and other input prices being sticky. And so in the original model, the short run aggregate supply curve was horizontal. Um, then we talked about the modern Keynesian model where short run aggregate supply curve is uh, upward sloping, um, at least to some degree. And uh, so this upward sloping supply curve is the Keynesian short run aggregate supply curve. In the third section, we looked at the factors that cause shifts in short run and long run aggregate supply curves. Uh, recall that anything that shifts long run aggregate supply will also shift short run aggregate supply, um, but not vice versa. Something that only shifts short run does not shift long run. Um, and usually the things that shift short run only are temporary shocks, kind of like what we're probably experiencing right now with the pandemic. Uh, then in the fourth section, we looked at the effects of aggregate demand and aggregate supply shocks on equilibrium real GDP in the short run. 
and we saw that uh, a shock that causes aggregate demand to shift to the, to the left and decrease will cause real GDP to go down, uh, causing a recessionary gap. Um, whereas a shock that, sh that shifts aggregate demand to the right, increasing causes an inflationary gap, prices go up and real GDP goes up above its full employment level. And then we wrapped up the chapter uh, by talking about the causes of short-run variations in inflation rates. So we talked about uh, when aggregate demand increases, it leads to demand uh, pull inflation. And when short-run aggregate supply goes down, that leads to cost push inflation. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Um, what I'd like you to do for your discussion post is, um, let's see, talk about whether or not you think, uh, whether or not you've seen evidence for the price level adjusting, or whether you think that there's evidence that suggests that prices are sticky, right? Uh, within the context of today, what we're experiencing today with the pandemic, okay? Um, Good luck on your second exam on Thursday, April 23rd, uh, due by 11.59 p.m. Um, be sure to try to do the practice exam a couple times before you attempt the real thing. Um, and don't worry, you don't have a, a lecture video for Thursday. You just have to worry about the exam. But I will see you for the next uh, lecture video uh, next Tuesday, April 28th.